Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today you join me for another one of our 300 TDI conversions. Now the last one you guys would have seen if you've been watching the channel would have been our 300 TDI XMOD conversion. Now from this, uh, we want to be fitting a 300 TDI to a Series 3. Now this vehicle is originally a two and a quarter litre petrol, so we will be converting over to a diesel. You guys are gonna see all the stuff of how we're gonna be converting this to run a 300 TDI. Now there are some confusing bits from our side. Is it gonna have power steering? We're not sure just yet. A um, couple of queries on what we're gonna be doing with a few certain bits, but the first thing we had to do was buy Discovery One. Grab a drink, this one's gonna be a great one. Enjoy. and we fully rebuilt it. Now we've gone a little bit further this one and I'll show you guys how we rebuilt this engine, what we've done with that engine and it's looking fantastic now.
I think next stop is lunch. so close to firing this thing up so we're going to skip lunch today but luckily not really skipping lunch because we've got our Y food. Now Y food is not a diet or a protein shake it's simply a meal replacement shake. It's got 26 vitamins and minerals it tastes great they've got a whole range of flavors. I've got their taster selection pack here and it is amazing stuff. It's lactose free, gluten free, high in fiber. But are you having lunch today? Uh, I've got it with me. Do you want to try some Y food? Yeah, Come on then. So guys, you've got to check out Wild Food, in all seriousness. It's a great meal replacement shake. It, like I said, it's not a diet or a protein shake. It simply fills you up and it keeps you filled for like three to five hours. Check the website below, use our link in the description below. Thank you so much, Wild Food. We're gonna enjoy our quick lunch and hopefully get this series fired up. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> Right, so we've just got our head back from the machine shop, um, had it pressure tested and skimmed. They've taken free foul off the face of the head, which isn't a lot. Um, pressure test came back absolutely fine, so it's all good news. Um, got a new stretch bolts to go in here. Obviously, we've got a new head gasket on there, which the CB put on earlier on. Uh, got our gaskets, got a new vacuum pump going on. We've got a new fuel pump going on, new water pump going on. Uh, tensioner, obviously a new belt, all through to any obvious bits and pieces that you'd normally do. So we've also got a new radiator to keep things nice and cool, make sure it's running properly, a uh, new intercooler and a new sump to go on. We've also got some black paint turning up, hasn't turned up yet, but we're going to paint the block to make it look nice and smart so it looks nice and fresh in the vehicle. Um, basically you're going to stick on the time lapse and crack on. And let's get this thing built up and see what it looks like.
that's sort of 50, 60, 70% done of the engine. Still got time about to fit to go on the injection pump, but it's got a full gasket kit. We had the head off of this one and skimmed it. Um, we haven't touched the bottom end, but we have given it a spritz of paint. We did assess the pistons, the rings, the balls, all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's a very healthy engine. We're very happy with it. It's looking super fresh, really cool. There was a few certain things on this. Uh, we had two rocker arms where the caps have worn through on the top of the valves. We have replaced those caps. We have adjusted all the, um, all the tolerances. We have put two new rocker arms on. We've given it full bells and whistles. This thing's gonna be a real beauty when we look under the bonnet. We've also had everything sandblasted, powder coated, painted, looking super smart this one. We've also got new radiators, intercoolers, all that good stuff. So, you join us sort of here. This is episode one, but we've already been doing some stuff in the background. Bertie is just about to pull the original engine out of this, out of this series, and hopefully we can unbox our kit, see what's involved, and get started. So guys, the engine is actually dropped in the engine bay now, and we have done a little bit more off camera, like fit the radiator, radiator shroud, the intercooler support has been fitted, so it's got the intercooler in place. Now, obviously this was a two and a quarter petrol before, and we're converting it to diesels. So there are a number of, few little questions, aren't there, Leon? Like we've got the glow plug wiring, which we're gonna have to do a timed relay or something like that to get that to operate, like, like function like normal. But for the most part, we are actually almost ready to fire this thing up, aren't we, Bert? Yeah, nearly there. We've just, got, what have we got? Just air left. Um, and the wiring, and that's so the in intake system. Yeah. But we've done the exhaust, we've got all this together, the fluids are in the engine, it's all looking super smart. I mean, all that hard work is so worth it because when you have a proper look around this thing, it is absolutely immaculate, and that's exactly what we wanted. And uh, it's, it's definitely a tight fit in here, but we've still got to fit the fans that we burnt on the front. Yeah, the, the Rebotech fan goes And on. that goes on this side, but it is a very tight squeeze in here. We didn't end up running power steering because you would need a P38 steering rack on this side, it's a little bit too much. Um, and I mean, this is a series, There's, you know, you're not going to be really using this thing day to day, but they will definitely be able to keep up with modern traffic with this engine fitted, but it's looking super, super good in here. Um, yeah, I can't believe actually how, how nice everything's sitting, it all bolts up, everything, obviously all that galvanizing, all of that blasting, powder coating and painting has really, really worked some wonders in this. It's so close to being there that it's, it's painful. <laughs> <laughs> And because this was a carbon engine, we have, what we're doing with the return line, 
because um, obviously it wouldn't return usually. Why is that, Leon? Why would a petrol not have a return line to the tank? The so fuel return? It's a car carbureted car, so it just don't have a return. They use the fuel as it as it needs to. So our plan for this is to have the return going up to the top yeah. of the fuel filter head, yeah, isn't it? We think that makes the most sense. We could also use a spout off of a diesel two and a quarter petrol tank, uh, diesel tank, obviously and run it direct back to the tank, but into the fuel filter head seems to make the most sense. Needs to installation without modifying the car too much. Um, this actually, we could actually just convert this back pretty quick, couldn't we, if we yeah. wanted to. Not that we're going to, because it's a way better engine choice for the car. And we have upgraded it, disc and pads all round, and then we fitted up some nice wolf steels, painted them the same colour as the roof, and got the 255 85s on. It just gives you that really chunky look, and it won't be wandering all over the road with those old cross flies or whatever they were. So these look super cool. Engine looks absolutely sick. So you've joined me, uh, we've got the engine in. Um, we've got a few more bits to do to get it running. Um, we, I, I just wanted to mention a few little modifications and stuff we've had to do to um, basically get the, what the engine needs to run, right? So uh, we've got the airbox mounted here, which is looking really nice. Um, all the necessary pipe work. Uh, the header tank's gone here, that looks great. Just in the middle of running the uh, washer lines. So they're gonna go sort of back here and around there. That looks great. Um, brake lines I've still got to do, because um, we had to uh, move them, because where the airbox is sitting would uh, basically foul where they sat before. So to make them safe, we've got to reroute them round. The fuel's done, to make things easier. Uh, we've just run the fuel line return, which uh, you can go back to the tank. To make it easier, we've just gone straight to the top of the uh, fuel filter. Um, so lastly, pretty much is engine wiring. Um, so to do that, we had to relocate the, the battery, uh, which has gone just in here, which I think is really super cool. It's neat, it's not in the way. You'll be able to still get access to it because the seat will just pop straight up. So for ease of installation, we haven't run power steering. Um, so we've got a shorter belt on it. The uh, alternator is on a new mount that sits up here. Um, and it looks really neat, really cool. Um, it's quite funny because when we put the engine in for the first time on its own, it looked really low in the engine bay and it looked like the engine bay was so empty. We've now managed to put all of this stuff in that it's what the engine needs to run and it's filled the engine bay up so much. It looks super compact. It is tight in there, isn't it? It is, it's, it's tight in here, but it looks super neat. It looks neat. It looks neat. Um, and it's, it's kind of just the right amount of space for everything you need. Um, and also then, yeah, it's... You can still get to everything, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You, can still you still maintain everything. everything. If you need to change your turbo, you can still get to everything. Yeah. Everything looks super neat, and we've done everything. We've spent all the time doing making everything... Yeah. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> we can make everything OEM. I think, I think also as well for, like, the, the long term of this engine, in terms of servicing, bits like that, everything's where you need it. Fuel fit was right there. Air filter's there. You've got your coolant. Everything is where... That I do like how you've mounted you know, all your fluids on this side. So yeah. you can, when you're doing a service, for example, yeah. you do have to, you get everything over this side. Everything looks nice and neat in the engine bay. And we have gone this extra way with the maintenance on this, haven't we? We've done everything to make, it, essentially this just needs oil changes for yeah. what I assume the next is 10, 15 years. This engine should be good to go. We've done a lot of work on this and we changed every single gasket on it. Yeah. So it should be um, fit to enjoy for, for, for many years to come. You should have to lift the bonnet on this. A million percent. I mean, Every like, MOT sort we, of thing. We went the extra mile with all of this bracketry. And all this mount, is powder coated. All powder coated and repainted. Like everything, even down to the fuel filter housing. That looks great. Um, we really did try to go the extra mile with this to make this look. I think it's all worth it. It does look yeah, super, so super it. clean. It, looks, it just looks amazing. I can't wait to hear this thing far up. How far are we away? We've literally got the wiring and then put some fuel in. We've got to drain the tank of petrol. Drain the tank of petrol. Fill it up. Fill it up with diesel. We could get it cranking with, with running some batteries, but you've really kept the battery, but we've still got the wiring to run to yeah. the starters and stuff like that, haven't we? I, I think, yeah. We, I mean, like you say, we could, we could just get it running, but I think um, where we are now, it makes sense to run all the battery wires, sort out our earths. So we still got, we're going to put three different earths on this. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon of the tyres, Bert? Big. They're cool though, aren't they? <laughs> they look great in a series. I think these, well, these tyres, um, these are, as you guys would have seen in that, I bought another Defender, the blue hue build that we're doing. Same wheel and tyre package, looking super cool. Really retro style, works so well with the Defender or a series. Same wheel and tyre package, looking super clean. Yeah. And it would just mean that these tyres are big, square, yeah. and this thing will roll very nicely. With that, regardless of the engine choice, this will feel sturdy behind the steering wheel. Landys typically have that vagueness behind the steering wheel. And a lot of that comes down to thin cross flies with a little rounded tire 
fitting a big square tire makes these things stick on the road and it's, you don't end up driving around like Fred Flintstone sort of exactly. doing this left and right. So yeah. they make a big difference to it. So but we actually needed to do them what for the disc and pads, didn't we? Yeah. We did a we, disc, we disc did conversion. A disc conversion, the Zeus kit. Um, and in order to actually fit the wheels on, we had to go for this. Let's um, change it with a, a yeah, tire, a, a, the oh, wheel package. Yeah. So we chose them, they look super clean. We got them painted up to the same colour as the roof as well, which looks, looks smart. So we have got heavy duty steering bars to go on this because every single ball joint on the steering uh, is not in the best condition. It makes way more sense to fit these bars and we find that they have the heavier ball joints on each end. So they're greasable, they're not a lot of money and if they do get hit with a rock or anything they don't bend like the typical series. It's like a chopstick isn't it the original yeah. steering bar so that makes a big difference. They look quite cool underneath and obviously with the big tyres and stuff like this just makes sense to uprate them. I don't know how much they are. I think they're a couple hundred quid. Pretty good value from Terra Firma, really decent. Um, I think they look epic. I'm going to cut the video here, Bert, and yeah. that's, that's it. They've had enough. <laughs> Tell them they've had enough, and they'll have to tune in for the other one. <laughs> I actually realise how, how much work and time you put into this video that you guys have seen. It's uh, the culmination, if you will, of uh, a couple of months' work, I should think, isn't it? Actually? It is. Spaced yeah, out a couple of months, we've actually been doing stuff in the background, even including buying the car, rebuilding the engine putting it into this position here, you guys are gonna have to tune in for the second episode where we finally get this thing fired up, where we do all the wiring. We can take this thing out for a spin, see how this thing feels. The steering was absolutely cack, wasn't it? It was all over yeah, the place. It was, uh, it was hanging on by its last legs. And now we're gonna, go, we're gonna give it a wash in the next video. We're gonna do the wiring, we're gonna fire it up, if it'll fire up, if we've done anything correctly. It will fire up. And uh, it will fire up. <laughs> and, um, Guys, don't forget to leave us a comment in the comment section below. What do you think of this conversion? What have you done differently? Do you think we've done everything to your taste and standards? What do you think about the wheel and tyres? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. That would mean the absolute world to us. Please do a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a follow on Instagram, which is at Juice Motors. Stay tuned and we'll see you guys for the next interesting update.